Okay, this is my update and I'm gonna get started by talking about the main thing that I've been doing, which is the Feynman Mafia. And so basically all of the members of the Feynman Mafia go through a series of lectures that explains how the universe works and they learn from first principles what's going on. And then when they believe that they understand what's going on, they go and explain it to me since I've already gone through those lectures. And essentially they're learning through the Feynman technique, uh, you know, learn by explaining. But yeah, the, the lectures we're following are very complete, uh, complete, and they also go from zero to like expert, um, which means that it's very friendly to people who want to learn physics from a first principles approach, um, which is great for this sort of Feynman technique, Socratic method type of thing, because I actually can ask why, you know, and go all the way down the, the rabbit hole of justification and get down to like the straight logic. So I've been working on that and we have a lot of interesting uh, people participating and doing this. I really enjoy doing it and helping out all these people learn how the universe works. And yeah, I'm excited to see where the group goes from here. I am trying to expand the group and to maybe get something like 20 people actively learning um, from this lecture series and explaining to me. And then eventually I plan to host these Socratic seminars where I get, you know, four or five people that are all, that I've all filtered to make sure that they understand a certain topic good enough so that during this Socratic discussion, we can dive extremely deep into the intricacies of certain topics like topology, like manifolds, like axioms, like the entire thing. Um, and I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. And so the end goal for the group is I think that I can get all, all this, this group of people that are participating in the Feynman Mafia to the point where we can actually read academic papers about general relativity, about quantum mechanics, and understand the cutting edge research. We need to have more people who do math and physics, not for academic reasons, but just for the love of its reasons. And they might have like a full-time job doing something else completely different, but can still contribute and understand what's going on. And this is so important because it allows these people to not preserve the idiosyncrasies of academia. If you get trained through the classical framework, then you'll make the same mistakes as everybody else in a way. Um, the classic example that I love referring back to is um, Einstein in uh, 1904 where he was a patent clerk at an office, just, you know, approving or rejecting patents. And at the same time, he was making time for physics and, and you know, discussing it with a couple of friends. Um, and then eventually he made this huge breakthrough and, and was able to publish it, which was fantastic. And so I think we need more people like that, um, that are doing completely unrelated things to math and physics, but are still curious about it and are able to understand what is happening, the, the up-to-date, the cutting edge research. Uh, this is just David recording after. I want to mention that there's actually a pretty cool overlap the, with the quantum.country essay uh, that Michael Nielsen and Andy Matichak wrote, where essentially what we're doing at the Feynman, with the Feynman Mafia is literally just community-based version of space repetition. So on a personal level, I've been learning uh, differential forms, uh, which are actually just n co-vector fields, and that's a whole interesting thing. And the end goal for me is as I mentioned earlier, just to be able to read the cutting edge general, general relativity and quantum mechanics papers that come out and be up to date with that and understand what's going on. Okay, now for the next part of this update, I'm gonna talk about my experience having co-lived in San Francisco and how that was just absolutely amazing. Uh, now to start off, I have to shout out Navid for pushing me to even go to San Francisco in the first place. And he made it clear that it wasn't even close how much value I would get from going compared to just staying home here. And I have to totally agree that I got so much freaking value. On that note, I have to give a huge thank you to Jacob Cole for inviting me to a bunch of cool events and making me feel very comfortable while living in SF and just meeting all these cool people. And so I'm naturally just a very introverted person and without uh, this push to, to meet more people, I think I would have had a way less interesting time while in San Francisco. So I'm, I'm really happy that you're able to do that. And so a big thank you to all the people who stayed with me at all of these different cool living houses and made it such a wonderful experiences. So at the Edify houses, whether that's Samson, Ricard, Daniel, Daniel showing me how to make those epic tacos. I'll actually put a picture of that up right now. Um, Ricard being funny, Brennan and Matea organizing, uh, Ben and Luke for organizing. Oh my God, thanks to you guys. Thanks to you guys. Um, and then when I stayed at Incepto, everybody who was at, at that house, you guys were so amazing. 
Uh, so Belinda, Grace, Ayush, uh, Dennis, Raf. I'm just so happy I was able to stay there and it was such a wonderful experience. And yeah. And so the wrap up to my time in SF was the Interact Retreat. And I have to, I, I'm so grateful for the time that I was there at the camp and all the wonderful people that I talked to. Um, specifically, I'm really happy that uh, Sebastian, you got a chance to talk to me about math and that I got a chance to meet you. Um, Amanda, for just being all around awesome and that random, like whatever, 6 a.m. run with Aparna. And then Ra Rafi for teaching me measure theory. That was a lot of fun. People were just doing their thing and then we just got the whiteboard and you're teaching me that stuff and that was awesome. Um, Ananya for playing volleyball and for being the second best volleyball player at the camp, unfortunately behind me. Uh, Santiago for always hanging out with me and being awesome. Um, Diego for teaching me that limit stuff with math and having that chance to talk to you. Uh, and then Noah for after the retreat hosting me in Oakland. That was just fantastic and I'm so grateful that you did that. And since then, I've been doing a bunch of things. I've been reading this book called Proofs and Refutations by Imre Lakatos, and it's been absolutely amazing. The entire book takes the, the form of a Socratic dialogue between a teacher and, uh, and, and the students, and they all, they all you know, discuss with each other. And it's absolutely hilarious because sometimes they even get mad at each other. They're like, oh, but the, the technique that you were using to prove it is like maybe inaccurate, like that's not, a, and it's just wonderful because it shows how math is more of an artistic practice rather than this rigorous thing that you you think it is uh, on the outlook. So we we'll definitely recommend reading that book. And I've been having so much fun reading it, like literally smiling. As I'm reading the book, I'm just smiling and looking at the pages being, wow, this is just fantastic. I also went to Montreal uh, a few weeks ago, and I have to say, give a big thank you to Sonia for uh, helping me meet so many interesting people. That was wonderful. Um, and actually when I was uh, in Montreal, I went to McGill and took a, a few classes, which was fun being a non-student and being in that environment. Um, I took a Calc 3 course that had like many, many students there, something like 70 students. That wasn't the best. I mean, I guess it's to be expected when you have such a big class. I felt, you know, I could have gotten the same thing from just a YouTube video or something. But then I went to a different class on topology and geometry, and that was so much fun. Um, like it was a small class of 20 people and the lecturer uh, had an amazing personality, a very funny personality, and so it was a lot of fun listening in. And it was actually with material I was familiar with. Not only that, but it was the perfect level of where I was at. Like the lecturer was talking about manifolds with boundaries, and I had already covered manifolds, and so I was able to understand what was going on. So when I came back to Toronto, I tried taking some courses at U of T, but unfortunately, um, U of T is a little bit more closed off, I guess we can say, than McGill. And so they unfortunately did not let me take, or I mean audit any courses, um, which is unfortunate, but okay. So I've also been spending a lot of time at the WeWork downtown. Okay, that's it. Uh, thanks for listening to the update if you've made it this far. All right, bye.